Hi guys, my name is Chris with Electron Automotive. We're a full service hybrid repair facility and we're also a remanufacturer of hybrid batteries. Today I'm going to talk about hybrid batteries, how they work in, in the theory and the operation. So we've got the most common battery right here, 2004 to 2009 Toyota Prius. Uh, this battery, the fundamental principles are the same along a bunch of them and they're pretty much all produced by Panasonic, so they're very similar. So I'll go through this one, uh, show you all the parts in here, tell you a little bit about what they do, and we're going to have another video uh, shortly after this one where we're going to take apart the battery and explain every single part, you know, what it is, what it does, and such. So this is a battery that has been untouched. It just came out of a vehicle. The only thing I've done is I've unbolted the case so we can open it up and take a look. So I'll pull this case off, but the first thing you do before you open it is you remove the safety plug. Pull it out, that makes this a lot safer. So take it off, put it to the side. Now. So now that we got it off, I'll kind of go over all of the different parts in here, tell you a little bit about what they do and just a, a real quick explanation, and then I'll tell you how the whole thing works. So the, the very first thing, the biggest part of it is all of the modules right here. These modules are 7.2 volt batteries. They're comprised of six 1.2 volt cells. So we refer to this as a module. This is actually six little batteries in one connected in series. You can see they have their own cells here and they're basically connected in series. Here's the positive, here's the negative. So how this works is you have a bunch of these batteries all lined up, they're connected in series, all of the voltage adds up. So you do 28 times 7.2 and I think you end up with maybe 201.6. Uh, don't expect to get 7.2 volts when you measure them. They usually have more than that, around 7.5 to 7.75 usually. The voltage can be higher if it just came out of the vehicle or was recently charged, or a good battery could even be lower down in the sevens if it's been depleted. So don't rely too much on voltage. A lot of people get hung up on voltage when they're testing batteries, thinking that's a way to, to test them. So let's start out. Very first thing, simple air vents right here. At the top, these just pull right off. This right here is a pressure relief valve. If this battery builds up too much pressure, instead of expanding and exploding, it'll vent out right here, and the gases will go through the tubes and go out. The newer versions of the Priuses do not come with these. They stopped using them, uh, probably because it's, I don't know, this is just an assumption of mine. I don't think it's needed because it's very rare that the batteries actually vent. If a battery vents, it means something went wrong inside of the battery and failure is imminent. So first thing is the air dams. Uh, second, these are bus bar covers. You have all of these copper connectors right here, which help put the batteries in series. And if you look, you've got a wire harness below that runs to each copper connector. That's how the battery uh, computer samples the voltages and monitors a lot of the information going on with the battery. You also have a current sensor. The current sensor is right here. It determines how much current is coming in and out. Um, its window of range is negative 200 to positive 200 amps. So the battery, the battery control module can pretty much tell what's going on with the battery and its, its general state of health by watching the voltage and the, the amperage and monitoring as the vehicle's been driving. The most important one is it bases it off of voltage. Now, it doesn't mean you can take a voltmeter to it and test the batteries and tell if they're good. We have a lot of clients call us that say, uh, hey, I've, I'm getting error codes from my battery saying that it's bad, but when I open it up, all of my voltages are good. What do I do? The short answer is you need to actually put it on professional test equipment to figure out which ones are, are good, which ones are bad. But unfortunately, there's nothing out there that's simple enough that you can do it on your own. You have to take it to a professional repair facility. There's videos out there that show you ways to do it by you know, using light bulbs and, and things like that, but it's, it's a real Mickey Mouse way of doing it and it doesn't provide you reliable results. So as the vehicle's driving, monitors voltage, monitors amperage, uh, temperature of the batteries, and from looking at those different parameters, it's able to differentiate what's good, what's bad. Um, if the temperature gets too high, it can rely more on the engine, kick the fan on, and such. So this part of the battery really only has two things. You have all of the battery blocks, 
with uh, the, the, what I call this a voltage accusation harness. It's where it uh, determines the voltage of the batteries. So you've got the blocks, the harness, and you have thermistors or temperature sensors. You've got one up top here and three on the bottom. Air comes into the battery this way from the fan and goes through and in between the batteries. On the bottom of this case, there's actually some foam along the side right here to seal it off. And you have this piece right here, which we refer to as an air dam. Uh, so the air comes in and gets shoved down in between the batteries. If you take a look, they have all of these bumps on the sides of the battery. So what that does is it allows there to be space in between. That way when the air comes through, it has a passage to go through. If they were flat, it wouldn't be able to go through and cool it down evenly. So that summarizes what's going on over here. Let's talk about what's going on in the electronics box over here. Uh, you have your battery control module right here. Uh, this is just a, a generic control module. It's pretty simple and it measures the voltage off of the harness using the voltage dividers with some resistors on the inside. That's pretty much all there really is to it. It monitors data and it talks to the engine computer and the hybrid computer, uh, the ECM or ECU and the um, HVECU. It uses CAN, which is two wires that talks to it, tells it the condition of what's going on. So if you're ever trying to pull error codes to, about the battery, you're not going to find it in the engine computer. You need to talk specifically to the battery computer. So to take a look in here, I'll just name some things real simply, point them out. Like I said, in the next video, we'll go into more detail and actually take them apart. This is the battery control module, the BCM, not to be confused with the body control module. These right here are relays, high voltage relays. Uh, they're normally open, so right now I'm not going to uh, shock for two reasons. First, these are open and the safety plug is out. Uh, but these operate on the same fundamental principles as any other relay. You've got your coil and you've got your switch. Current sensor, it just measures the magnetic field around the wire. Here is another relay, four pin relay, same fundamental principles as all the others. A resistor right here to reduce the spark when these relays close. You don't want carbon to build up, like in the older cars with the power window switches. Uh, you can, they would go bad, you can open it up, scrape off the carbon, and start working again. But you don't want that happening in here because these are non-serviceable. So this resistor here helps reduce the, um, the sparks and the carbon buildup every time it connects and disconnects. So now, uh, the last thing to talk about is this right here, this is a, how do I say, it's an interlock switch is part of it. It's this part right here, but this is also a safety plug and it cuts the battery voltage down. So let me explain how that goes. So these two cables run over here and they go up to here, uh, straight to the modules. Now normally you have a copper connector in between here uh, to allow the current to flow. But what this is, is it's a break in it. That way it can cut the voltage in half, make it a lot um, safer. It cuts it pretty much in a third and two thirds, but it brings the voltage down to a safe amount. So how this works, this is just a, this is nothing really special. You've got two pins there. When you plug it in, it connects. And in here, you have a fuse. This is just a, a generic fuse, 125 amps. So when you put this connector in there, it completes the circuit and allows the electricity to flow. By pulling the safety plug out, it's like cutting a battery in half. It's not going to be able to let electricity flow you know, through the intended paths. Um, on top of this switch, you, uh, the, the safety plug, you have what's called an interlock switch right here. All this is is a jumper wire in here, and then you have a connector over there. When it gets shoved into it, it completes the circuit, and then the body control module knows that the safety plug is plugged in. So this is in some of the other videos, but I'm going to explain it in here just because it's such a, a common problem, because it's not, it's not very intuitive. So I'll show you how to insert the plug properly. You put the plug in, 90 degrees. Most people think that it's good now, but you actually need to push it down and click. Then it's good, and I'll show you why. take a look right here, there's actually two wires running to the bottom of this. When those two wires are connected, the body control module thinks the safety plug is in and everything is safe. 
So you'll see, if you watch this part right here, I'm gonna put it in, shove it 90 degrees, but it's still not connected until I actually push it down like that. So shove it in, up 90, down. Now it completes the circuit. The body control module knows that the safety plug is in and allows it to operate. If something goes wrong with this, it'll trip an error code that'll say something along the lines of interlock circuit high. So that pretty much uh, goes over the whole battery, how it works. Like I said, a lot of them are very similar. The third generation Prius, the 2012 to 2015, uh, is pretty much the same thing, except they've condensed a lot of these electronics into one box and the battery computer is a lot smaller. Uh, so take a look in the details at the bottom. Uh, as after the video, I always realize something maybe I missed, I'll slip it in there. Um, comments, let us know if you have any questions and I'll do my best to respond to you guys. Thanks for watching. My name is Chris with Electron Automotive and we're located in Southern California.